Good evening. From CBS News, this is Newsbreak. Mexico's Red Cross has confirmed 760 deaths from yesterday's earthquake, but the toll could reach 3,000. Many buildings are ruins, communications are shambles, and aftershocks more terror. After a hospital checkup today, doctors say President Reagan has completely recovered from his cancer operation. South African anti-apartheid leader Alan Bosak was released from three weeks' detention. Now this. The next time you visit your favorite haunt, why not apply for the American Express card? Curtis Strong faces a possible 15-year sentence following his conviction for dealing cocaine to Major League Baseball players. John DeLorean was indicted today on racketeering and fraud charges in connection with his bankrupt auto company. He could get 20 years in prison. I'm Chris Kelly, CBS News, Washington. More news later on this CBS station. This is CBS. A bunch of corn. A bunch of corn is what we'll sing for you. A bunch of corn. But did you know that you can munch it too? A bunch of corn. It's such a munchy, crunchy thing to do. It's the old Dutch snack in the windmill pack. We're crunching corn. We're crunching corn snacks each and every day. We're crunching corn. We love to munch our corn the old Dutch way. We're crunching corn. Between our crunching, you can hear us say, it's the old Dutch snack in the windmill pack. On any given day, some 4,000 people come to Cub Foods because of assured minimum pricing. This creates an interesting side effect, fresher produce. Since we have more customers, we have to restock our shelves more often with fresh fruits and vegetables. No other store can say that, because no other store has assured minimum pricing. So if getting high-quality fresh produce at the lowest price is important to you, you're in good company and lots of it at Cub Foods. It's a new way to run a supermarket. If you've got two minutes, you can make Micro Magic. It's French fries that are made to be microwaved. So they come out golden brown with real deep fried taste that's downright delicious. For a quick fix and snack, or a meal in minutes, reach for Micro Magic. Handy single servings or the box that's big enough to share. Micro Magic is made to be microwaved anytime. Computers are helping the handicapped to walk. Report at 10. Falcon Crest will be seen at 10.35 tonight in order that we might bring you the following WCCO television special one more time. One more time. Brought to you in part by Northern States Power Company. By Midwest Federal, your good tree to come to for shelter since 1891. By Share Senior Care, Minnesota's most experienced HMO health plan for seniors. And by all the fine products of General Mills. Tonight, from the Carlton Celebrity Room, a tribute to Dave Moore, the man, the legend, one more time. Welcome to One More Time, a nostalgic tribute to a man who you and we have welcomed into our homes for these past 28 years, a great man. Of course, he is an institution in Minnesota, and our guest of honor tonight, Mr. Dave Moore. Now, the Dave Moore News. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's news is headlined by the crash of an Air Force B-52 jet bomber on the August... Coast. Minneapolis City Councilman came to grips with... St. Paul City planners and businessmen are at hope that the recession is receding. 
From WCCO Television News, the Northwest Communications Center, this is The Scene Tonight, in color with Dave Moore. On The Scene Tonight, another accident involving the Kennedys. More courtroom maneuvering over those Watergate tapes. Ag News records are getting a going over, and John Ehrlichman comes out of his Seattle seclusion. From the WCCO Television News Center, this is the 10 p.m. Report with Dave Moore. From the WCCO Television Newsrooms in the Twin Cities and Washington, D.C., this is the 10 p.m. Report. And now... Dave Moore. Well, it was just about six years ago that I first sat down beside... Dave Moore to co-anchor the news and I remember thinking boy I'm going to be working next to an institution in this state and it made me very nervous mm -hmm. so I sat down and we began doing our first 6 p.m. report and as I was reading the story I felt my heart starting to beat faster than normal and my palms began to sweat and I thought God I hope Dave doesn't notice this <laughs> So we finally made it to commercial, me thinking that I'd gotten through this and pulled it off without Dave noticing. And he very calmly turned and looked at me and he said, Pat, are you having a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> if simply sitting next to Dave Moore gives you a heart attack, the thought of succeeding him <laughs> has a, another kind of physical effect on me. It, It is a, as though some prop boy, Dave, were asked at the last minute to step in for Lord Laurence Olivier in a command performance of Otello. I feel that way. I truly do. It would be impossible, of course, to replace Dave Moore, so it shall not be attempted. But what I will do, though, Dave, I will attempt to be the gentleman the consummate professional, the friend that you have been to the viewers here in Minneapolis. I hasten to add that the people of St. Paul also liked you. You know, we sort of have Dave uh, captured here tonight. He can't really respond to where he's sitting. Which is a good thing, because it's very difficult to compliment Dave Moore. He doesn't like it, and when you say, boy, that was good, Dave. <laughs> so we're going to give you some compliments tonight. You're just going to have to take them, Dave. Most fortunate for me, ladies and gentlemen, is that Dave Moore is not leaving by any stretch of the imagination. Most fortunate is that Dave Moore will remain on the air at WCCO-TV in his proper place to do the 6 p.m. report, to be called upon to do those things that only Dave Moore can do and those special kinds of programs that need that specific, that special, one-of-a-kind Dave Moore touch. Most fortunate is that we pay tribute to this man tonight for 28 years of service to WCCO-TV in these communities as he steps down merely from the 10 p.m. report, not a tribute to him as he retires. I can say very easily that we need you much more than you need us, and the longer you stay, the better off we all shall be. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a man 
whose vantage point encompasses the entire Channel 4 career of Mr. Dave Moore. Dave's best bud, Bud Kraling. Oh, it's been so serious up to this point. I'm going to change all that. <laughs> I'm glad the old geezer is getting some respect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> His own newscast starting on Monday at 6 o'clock. And I can call him an old geezer because I'm an older geezer than he is. Well, Dave and I, I think it's been uh, mentioned that we had the most fun, I think, and the days of the happy talk TV and the little bridge between the news, serious news, and the weather forecast. And we never rehearsed any of those little bits. We always thought it was better unrehearsed. We'd be surprised at what either one of us said. And so sometimes I'd say, well, before the break, ask me about Cutbank, Montana. So on the air, Dave would say, don't tell me there's a big storm coming from Cutbank, Montana. And I say, yes, there is. And he said, I told you not to tell me that. We had a lot of fun doing that. Almost as much fun as I'm sure Dave had doing the bedtime news. And sometimes you'd walk down the street with Dave, and somebody would say, when Dave was doing the bedtime news, they'd say, I saw you Saturday night. Great show. And Dave would say, don't you have anything better to do on Saturday night than watch that damn thing? <laughs> It's ineffective, it's immoral, and uh, it's unnecessary. But that's just one man's opinion. That was a bunch of hooey. Oh, I don't get any comfort out of that statement. Boy, look at all that water. And now the bedtime news with Dave Moore, brought to you by the Sealy Mattress Company. Tell them about the Sealy 3 Free Sheet Offer. What Sealy 3 Free Sheet Offer? The Sealy 3 Free Sheet you get when you buy whatever it is you buy to get the 3 Sealy Free Sheets with. Well, what do I want with 3 Sealy Free Sheets? Not you, you dumbbell. The people watching. What people watching? The people watching to find out what you have to do to get the 3 Free Sheets they get when they buy, which you're going to tell them what to buy to get the 3 Free Sheets. Buy what? Buy the 3 Free Sheets. Well, the three free sheets are free. Why do you have to buy them? Don't buy them. Look, there are teeth free sheets, free sheet teeth, three t-shirts. Oh, well, you mean you got three t-shirts and three free sheets too? You mean? No, no, no. When you look back on this day, <clears throat> what will February 1st, 1969 have meant to you? Uh, Richard Nixon will remember it as the day he sat around for three hours discussing the Middle East with his security council. Egypt's President Nasser will recall that on this day he announced that Egypt would increase its support to Palestinian guerrillas fighting Israelis in Israel. Chuck de Gaulle will surely remember February 1st, 1969, as the day he received a bill for $800 million from NATO for military installations left behind in France. Governor Karl Rovog was kind enough to act out a minor melodrama for us. As he alighted from his limousine, an errant doorman slammed the car door on the governor's pinky, producing a brief performance of the Ooh Ooh Quick Step. Wasn't this a lovely day today? The first day this year when spring has finally had a chance to reveal its inspiring decor. When those winter mounds of snow and ice and slag and glop have run out their time and one can almost reach out and touch the fragrance and the fresh, pristine beauty that abounds everywhere. Where do you get your weather from, bud? Well, a lot of it comes out of the West. <laughs> I mean, all those charts and graphs and instruments you use. Oh, well, they, they don't mean very much. I usually call the Weather Bureau. Call the weather bureau? Yeah, I say, hi there, what's the weather? And I write it down, and then I say it out loud to the folks. <laughs> For the rest of the scores, let's go to the old scoreboard. Yeah, there's the old scoreboard. Mr. Gillespie, I understand you've been sleeping on a Sealy Posturepedic for seven years. Well, I have to get up to go to the... I didn't mean seven straight years. I mean, it's kind of funny, but I just can't sleep. Uh, you're an insomniac. A what? I say, you're an insomniac. No, I'm Catholic. I trained about ten years ago. Me and a father just like that. Uh, oh, how I love these. Sealy mattress with soft spun top, all smooth and flatness. 
The strength within your dear life coil drives from my bones the pain of toil. Then we have the problem of interviewing in the frozen cold. I mean, even an old pro like Bob Potter has trouble. Is there any reason, is there any equitable number It says five or more dogs? Could a man have, uh, is there any number, in what I'm trying to say, where this kind of levels off, John? Beg your pardon? So it's more or less open to the type of dog that you have? Excuse me? Let's stop and do it again. I... Little wonder then that our news department dug right down to the bottom of the barrel and gave me a reporting assignment. They said when you talk to those people at the nudist club, be sure to look them in the eye. And for heaven's sake, don't be self-conscious. There are people too, you know, and I thought we handled ourselves pretty well, composed and calm. Please welcome to the uh, dais Bill Carlson and Nancy Nelson. Thank you, Don, if you think it's going to be tough replacing Dave on the 10 o'clock news, imagine how I felt when I had to replace him on the bedtime news. And <laughs> not very effectively. I began working with Dave when I was just um, a wee lad. <laughs> Came over from CCO Radio at that time, was a staff announcer at uh, WCCO Television for a while. One of the things that always used to impress us was that Dave always remembered the names of the dispatchers, of the new booth announcers, of the floor men. He often forgot the names of the executives, but he always knew those of us who were the workers with him. And we always loved it, respected him for it. I was 17 years old when I first began working with Dave, and I remember he called me Little Girl. I like Dave Moore a lot because it's over 20 years later, and he still thinks I'm a little girl and calls me that. <laughs> Two and a half years ago, when I went to Los Angeles to anchor the news, absolutely certain that I was way over my head, what should I come across on my desk on about my fourth day there but a letter from Dave Moore telling the little girl that he was proud of her and he wished her well. I'll keep working at it, Dave, because when I grow up, I want to be just like you. One more time returns in a moment. Is it possible to produce electricity and keep the environment sound? NSP has spent more than $300 million since 1970 to make sure we do both. During that time, we've reduced coal plant emissions by 70%. At the same time, we've increased the amount of electricity we produce from coal. Producing electricity and keeping the environment sound. At NSP, we don't think we have to sacrifice one to have the other. <laughs> I found the best fishing hole in the state. I got a fine boat. And I got some great fishing buddies to share it with. Now that I've signed up for share senior care, there's only one thing left for me to worry about. Running out of minnows. <laughs> Compare other health care plans and you'll choose Share Senior Care because there's so much more to share. <laughs> I'm a fool for your chocolate. I go wild, I be crazy, go out of control. If you're talking chocolate, you sweet talker, Betty Crocker. Your brownies give me fever, your cake gives me chills, you sweet talker, Betty Crocker. There's a special touch that Dave Moore has added to the 10 o'clock news broadcast over WCCO-TV over the years. He's comparable to Midwest Federal's own symbol, the solid and stable Mighty Oak. He's been through all the news with us, tragedy, history, and triumph. We've seen the concern in his eyes. We've heard the smile in his voice. Saying goodnight to Dave at the end of each evening hasn't been difficult. Saying goodbye to the years of late news anchoring is almost impossible. Thank you, Dave, from the friends and customers of Midwest. 
Well, a wise man once said, he who would know the heart and mind of America better know baseball. And we would like to add of tonight's guest that he who would know the heart and mind of Dave Moore had better learn baseball. And so now here is Dave on the game he loves. Baseball is a joyful religion. Bases loaded. Anticipation. Is the hit? Run! The in, they're out of the inning. See, since the age of eight, baseball has been the spiritual side of my life. You go to church. The ballpark has been the altar of my life. Now here's Ben Oglevy. Everybody misspells his name. They call him Ogilvy. It's Oglevy. You've got to know these things. See how they spell the name? O-G-I-L? It's not O-G-I-L. It's O-G-L-I. Oglevy. Please. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Show me a bubble. Real live ball players. Oh, well, these are the best. Hey, my boys. My family. I like watching you in the studio. Huh? You're the best in there. Oh, I'm Joe Fan. Huh? Baseball is a memory. Standing room only at the new Metropolitan Stadium today for the season's opener which saw Wichita drop the Millers four to two. It was a great day for a ball game. Were you there? Baseball is a memory. As he watched, he offered some thoughts on the last game at the Met. When the game's over, I'm going to sit here for just a few minutes and weep. Sorrow? Certainly, there is sorrow. But isn't it sorrow that brings the faithful back to worship again and again in search of hope? And isn't hope the counterpoint of sorrow? Isn't yesterday's failure the springboard to tomorrow's triumph? But today, today, those bums, oh, those bums, We'd like to bring up now two of our favorite people to talk about one of theirs, Ralph John Fritz and Mark Rosen. That's what we do when we go to work, you know, just so we know what <laughs> department we're in. Dave, you know, driving out here, I'm sure my thoughts turn to you right away because I know when I drove past what used to be Met Stadium, a tear came to my eye, and I know it comes to yours every time you, you drive past what should have been a ballpark forever. Uh, unfortunately, that's not to be, but you know, in, after watching that tape and having the opportunity over the last couple of years to work with you on the 10 p.m. report, uh, it's been akin to catching Sandy Koufax. You're both Hall of Famers and the best I've ever seen. Dave, the late 1940s, American Association, who was the last Minnesota Miller to lead the American Association in hitting? Ray Dandridge. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Ray Dandridge. Third base. Rance Plass. Rance Plass, you're right. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. If, um, if you were to ask Dave Moore why he thinks he is a good anchor man, you can count on the usual response, either spoken or printed. The usual response is, I'm just an actor, I just, just an actor. <laughs> a better one than Don, too. <laughs> Counted 56,000 small babies born last year. 33,000 citizens ended up in the obit columns. We bumped off 100 of them. 
We creamed 800 of them on the country lanes and the interstates. Snowmobiles snuffed out 13 more. And the rest of them died with their boots off. We only had 16 inches of rain. And more sunshine than we ever did have. It was enough to give a man a permanent taste. Tomorrow is Christmas. And I'm going to tell you a story about the poor, the tradition of giving, the north wind, and empty letter boxes. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Granson. And love. Sing ho for the life of a bear. Sing ho for the life of a bear. I don't much mind if it rains or snows. I've got a lot of honey on my nice new nose. I don't much care if it's Nose or it's ours, because I got a lot of honey on my nice clean pot. Sing ho for a bear. Sing ho for a. Oh, and I'll have a little something in an hour or two. It's the Santa Show, brought to you by Tuffy Toys. And now here's Santa. Oh. Oh, my. There certainly are a lot of you out there today. Is it when Mr. Uh, when he got off the airplane at Kennedy Airfield, there was this young lady who... Uh, I think he can probably tell the story better than I. Good evening. I'm Dave Moore. Oh, yes, Mr. Granson. Hi, Al Austin Moore here. And, and we're, we're not, not related. related. Good evening. Tonight, we shall entice you with a tale of his national dream. The years have gone quickly for this reporter, writing, studying, and reporting on state government. Uh, Dr. Mars is a prominent sociologist at Cambridge University in London who has just completed a 10-year study entitled Cheats at Work, which concludes that stealing office pens, cheating on expenses, and letting the company pick up private bills is healthy thus leading to better employee morale and greater productivity. Remember, we're merely quoting, not condoning. All over town, people have been stopping us on the street. How do you like your new building? How's it going over there? How do you like it, huh? Do we like it? Are you kidding? And that, as Uncle Walter always says, that is the way it was. We'll be back with more in a moment. Come on, guys. Time to wake up. Electricity. We use a lot of it all day long. From early in the morning till late at night, we all use a lot of electricity. So use it wisely, because it all adds up. Energy NFT. For some of us, retirement planning through IRAs came along a little late. But now, thanks to Midwest Federal's Great Oak Agency, we can invest in a tax-deferred annuity plan any time before age 85. I did. It's a retirement plan that not only defers taxes, but earns you high interest as well. And there's no limit to the amount that you can set aside. And no charges. For annuity planning, call Midwest Federal. The good tree to come to for shelter for nearly a century. Maureen Stapleton for Fiber One Cereal. Hello. I'd like to talk to you about your breakfast and your health and new Fiber One. By now you've heard how important fiber is in your diet. That's where Fiber One comes in. Because no brand cereal has more fiber than Fiber One or less sugar. And a high fiber, low fat diet may reduce the risk of some kinds of cancer. Fiber One. You can't beat it for fiber. It's healthy. It's smart. It's the one for me. <laughs> I found the best fishing hole in the state. I got a fine boat. And I got some great fishing buddies to share it with. Now that I've signed up for Share Senior Care, there's only one thing left for me to worry about. 
Running out of minnows. <laughs> Compare other health care plans and you'll choose Share Senior Care because there's so much more to share. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Al Austin. <laughs> As you can see from the old tapes being shown tonight, those of us who have shared the news desk with Dave over the years look different from tape to tape, from year to year. We keep changing. Our hair gets longer and then shorter, well, except for Bud. Uh, our sideburns go up and down, our lapels and our ties get wider and narrower, and Dave just stays the same. He never falls out of fashion because he was never in it. <laughs> now and then high-priced consultants come around and they try to send him to a hairstylist or a haberdasher and I think sometimes he went but when he came back he always looked just the same. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. $500 suit $20 sport coat, doesn't matter, it looks just the same on Dave. Changing times, trends, consultants, uh, technology, none of those things have had any luck trying to bend Dave Moore. In fact, they have to watch out for him. Because, let's face it, along with not being a snappy dresser, another thing that Dave is good at not being is a man with a consistently sunny disposition. Ah, oh, God damn it, this... Okay, everybody be calm. Everybody be calm! I don't understand technology. What the hell did she do with this? I read this thing. I, re I read this... I read this damn thing three times. Oh, Christ. Three times I've read it. I read this damn thing... Th Oh, gee. I hope you appreciate the fact that our editor has spared you the indignity of reading that dumb groundhog story. Every year, this idiot assignment falls to me. Okay, Dave, you get to read the Punxsutawney Phil story. On the morning of every second day of February, the whole country grinds to a halt while some fur-lined little creep slithers out of a hole of a home in the ground in Pennsylvania. Photographers stand poised with their expensive cameras. The wire services put a hold on everything. Did he see it? Did he see the shadow? Of course he saw his shadow. The sun's burning 150,000 amps into the snow. You have to be blind not to see it. Now the Como Zoo gets into this idiot act. Bernie and Lucifer. Now there's a pair for you. They saw their shadows too. Big deal. The sorrow that is visiting so many of us rigid and flexible purists comes not just from the thought of the twins playing baseball under a roof, but the very thought that they're going to be tearing this place down. Tearing it down and replacing it with an antiseptic plastic marketing and housing complex is another victory for industrial greed. Next year, this baseball team will be playing out its comic opera in a convention hall that stands as a monument to man's fascination for the vulgar and the tacky. Well, what are you getting what at, brother? What I am getting at, young man, is what we've seen here this week is all a part of a pattern of God's work for shoving this obscenity down our throats. Do you mean to tell me... What I mean to tell you is that what we've seen here this week has been divine retribution. <laughs> leave you tonight with a disclaimer about those hideous ghoulish billboards that are disfiguring parts of the Twin Cities. The alleged artists for whom commitment papers have been prepared have identified these faces as those of us here on Channel 4. My friends, these are not us. These are pictures of people who work on Channel 5. And now, please welcome the WCCO Television Washington News Director, Skip Losher. Dave, I work in a city and have for the last five years of, of monuments. Monuments and institutions, you have already been described as an institution. 
I think in many ways you are much more than that. For me, in the last 17 years at this station, you have been the franchise. And if there is ever a monument built to this operation, your face ought to be on it. This is a bit sentimental, but you taught me more about what a broadcaster ought to be, how he ought to feel, how he ought to think, how he ought to relate to his audience than anybody else I've ever known. And I will be forever grateful. David, thank you. Would you please welcome back a sidekick of Dave's for many years on the 10 p.m. news, Miss Susan Spencer. <laughs> just wanted help, that was all. My happy show tonight, first of all, is to introduce some old friends, WCCO alumni, who have gone on, they thought, to, to greater glory. These are people who worked for, with, and largely around Dave Moore during their careers at WCCO. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Bowen. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, very much. Thank you, Susan. David, one of the things that's impressed me most about you is your tap dancing ability, your verbal tap dancing ability, which we've seen over the years, whether it's meant uh, your ability to stretch the info to the weather or sports when we had a film that didn't come up or a tape that wasn't in place, or whether it was the time that you took over, however briefly, the 1974 state BFL convention. All of a sudden, the convention came to a halt. Remember this? They pulled you out of your anchor booth and demanded to know what the hell WCCO television was doing interfering with the democratic process. They marched you up to the podium, and you gave a wonderful lecture on First Amendment rights, freedom of the press, and I think you delivered a rather artful mea culpa at the same time. And, and by the end of that, David, I think you could have gotten a nomination for governor. We're delighted you remained the anchor man. Those of you who uh, have problems sleeping may know him very, very well because along with his duties as a general assignment reporter for CBS in Washington, this gentleman also has been anchoring newscasts on the overnight broadcast Night Watch, Sam Ford. It was once said, um, you say it'll be a cold day in hell before you pay 50 cents for a gallon of gas? Well, kid, this is it. That was the first newscast I heard Dave deliver. But to be honest, I, I cannot go without uh, my very favorite kicker of all newscasts I've heard that, that Dave gave. And he said one night, you remember that woman in Michigan who had her mouth wired shut so that uh, she could lose weight? He says, well, she also lost her husband. She said, I'm my own woman now. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Karen Boris. <laughs> David, I've, w I've watched you for 11 years, and I learned one thing, not from anything you have ever said, but from watching you and working around you, and that is to take the job very, very seriously, but never for one second take yourself seriously. And I thank you. <laughs> very Peterson. <laughs> when someone asked uh, for me to think about Dave Moore and the years that I spent at WCCO, I thought of a time that really wasn't quite a happy time. It was a very, very sad January in 1978 when it became apparent that Hubert Humphrey, who had been fighting to battle cancer, was losing the battle, and he ultimately died. I remember that day for a couple of reasons, because of the sadness, because of the cold, and because of Dave Moore. And I think what I remembered and what I tried to carry with me when I left WCCO was the sense David had that it was a very big story, and I don't think he ever really cared or thought very much about what he was doing or how he was doing. He just wanted to tell it. And whether it was a big story or a little story, that's always the way Dave Moore has done it. I think it's marvelously simple. 
It's incredibly rare. It's Dave Moore, and I, too, am honored to have been one of your graduates. You watch Dave Moore tell you, that's the news, and you say to yourself, yeah, that's the news. For somebody in news in a world that is sometimes as cynical as this one, that's saying an awful lot. Here's to you. Stay tuned for more. NSP's most sensitive tool to help our customers manage energy by listening. We'd like to cut energy costs. We've developed programs that encourage foundries to alter energy use patterns and better manage energy bills. Now NSP is at work on other ideas for your energy needs. We're sharing these ideas with you and measuring their success with our most sensitive tool. Energy NSP. Another brand eater. Yep. Hope you're hungry. Whoa. Because it takes four bowls of all brand to get the vitamin nutrition in one bowl of Total. He's been brand washed. Total's a good source of brand fiber. Total also has 100% of nine vitamins and iron. It takes four bowls of many brand cereals to get that. You could eat four bowls of fruit and fiber or one bowl of Total. Think you missed the boat, Dad. Total. One bowl. 100%. <laughs> I found the best fishing hole in the state. I got a fine boat. And I got some great fishing buddies to share it with. Now that I've signed up for Share Senior Care, there's only one thing left for me to worry about. Running out of minnows! <laughs> Compare other health care plans and you'll choose Share Senior Care because there's so much more to share. <laughs> kids will be kids. Even way back in 1891, when Midwest Federal first opened its doors, they were always the apple of their mom and dad's eye, always the thing that kept folks thinking about their financial security. Today, kids are still kids, and Midwest Federal is still helping folks to secure their financial security. Checking accounts, savings accounts, IRAs, saving for the kids, or saving for your own retirement. Midwest Federal, your good tree to come to for shelter since 1891. Tonight we are celebrating the talent and the humanity of Dave Moore because it is important to mark this point in his life to make it worth remembering. But it is also very important for all of us in all of our lives because of the part that Dave has played in such a, a special role in this community. For 28 years he has been, in fact, he has been our town crier, the man who first told us about the remarkable events of our world. And somehow the way we feel about Dave is tied up with all of the memories we have of the history to the way we feel about our story.
Vice President of WCCO-TV, Mr. Ron Hanberg. Thank you all very much. Isn't this a terrific night? When I first told Dave several months ago that we were planning this little party for him, he reacted exactly as I knew he would. He threw up his arms and wailed. My God, he cried, that's the worst thing you can do. I'm not retiring. Why the fuss? Why the big deal? Why can't I just steal off and disappear one night? Well, Dave, I suppose we could have done it that way. But somehow it just didn't seem appropriate or right. Someone said it would have been like Pete Rose not taking a bow after he broke Ty Cobb's record. The moment is simply too important to allow to pass unnoticed. You are too much a part of this television station, too much a part of this community, too much a part of all of our lives to simply uh, slip off or fade away into the night. I suspect many people can't remember the 10 o'clock news without you. I can't. You have been to this community what Walter Cronkite has been to this country. You have been to television for the last 28 years, what Cedric Adams was to radio for the many years before that. Your face and your voice have been in our living rooms for so many nights, for so many years, that it's hard to think of WCCO television at 10 o'clock without thinking of you. In the minds of many people, you are WCCO television. And I'm one of those many people. Through tornadoes and floods, through uh, tempests and tedium, through crises and chaos, through good economic times and bad, through more governors and senators and legislators than any of us can remember, through the happiest of stories and the saddest, you have always been there at 10 o'clock. Warm, comfortable, reassuring, sometimes smiling, sometimes scowling, but you were always there. I can speak from experience. You made good writers sound great. You made poor writers sound good. You cared about words and about meaning and understanding. You cared about news and the community we all call home. But most of all, you cared about the audience. That the people out there in all those living rooms were getting the story straight. That everyone would go to bed each night comfortable with the fact that the world was still intact, maybe even smiling. You are sometimes, no question, cantankerous. But you are always caring. You sometimes grumble, but you always do what's asked of you and much more. You have helped more young reporters and anchors and news writers than any person I know. You keep calling yourself an actor, not a journalist. But most journalists I know could sit at your feet and take lessons. Yes, David, I know you're reti not retiring. You're going to still be doing the 6 o'clock. You're going to still be doing the more report narrations. You're going to still be doing the special assignments, huffing and puffing around the newsroom, keeping us all decent and honest. But you won't be there at 10 o'clock. As well as I know uh, Pat and Don will do in your absence, I know Don agrees, as he said tonight, that he will succeed you, not replace you. Because if someone who has worked with you and watched you and written for you for more than 20 years. I know, and I think everyone in this room and in this community knows, you are irreplaceable. So on behalf of us all, thank you 
very much one more time. Changed my mind. <laughs> Do you think I'll ever be the same again? I just, uh, you know, the sad thing about this is there is one sad note to this. How many people in the world can this ever happen to? Nobody. Never happened again. Probably won't happen to any of you in this room. I hope it does because I'll tell you. Oh God, it's happening. I was anxious to get up here because I was anxious to see how I'd handle it. I just. I don't know if I can. I don't. There's not the time to just thank everybody, but you have to know that I'm up here because you're out there. No, wait, how the hell did that go? <laughs> the reason I'm up here is because there isn't a person in this room who hasn't had something to do with the reason I am up here. When, uh, when high school students, uh, university journalism students, come in for the 
interview, the inevitable question is, which story do you remember the most? Which gives you the most satisfaction? Which do you re are you really fond of? You can, is most clearly uh, etched in your mind. And I have to tell them, I don't remember any of the stories. All I remember are the laughs. God, we had a lot of laughs. We had so many laughs, and, and we still do. All of you people out there, all of you, every single one of you, I, well, I won't with all of you, but I'm, you can go around all this table and point to some laugh. And I don't remember the year, but it was about 8 o'clock one evening. Clarence is the camera director assigned to the newscast for that night, and for some reason known only to him, he's sitting in a typewriter typing. Tom Cousins comes through with a tour. 30, 40, properly attired. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Hopkins Lions Club, I suppose, and Tom in hushed tones is telling him about how, what's going on here. Suddenly, Clarence rips the page out of his typewriter and yells to me, Hey, Moore, how do you want me to slap this Nixon story? <laughs> we had a... You see, those are the things that are important. Those are what you remember. So many people in this room have reminded me of them. The other night, Dick Dirks reminded me when Bob Foz was working, the dispatcher sticks his head out the door and says, I've got a woman on the phone, she's going to kill herself. Foz says, tell her to go to a high place and give us 10 minutes. <laughs> we had a, a reckless, reckless, wild photographer named Gordon Ireland, always crashing things up, always. Dispatcher yells out, Gordy Island says his car is on fire. Pettit yells, tell him to go to a car wash. <laughs> of course, Quentin Neufeld is the, the, we all know the Quentin Neufeld lines. As I'm grabbing the script, running upstairs in the haste to get the elevator. Look over that first section carefully. Why? I left out all the verbs. <laughs> Now, you wonder why you'd remember news stories and not remember those things? They just, they, they stand out in your mind. I, uh, I don't think I'll ever be the same out of this. Don and Pat, I just, um, well, I think probably I... <clears throat> I'll, uh, I get all, I don't, I don't know what to do. I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing the six o'clock news. I'm looking forward to working with the young people who are there, although they probably sometimes think I'm working against them. But I, I am looking forward to that, and I, I just, I better get off here. Thank you very much. Thank you. you in part by all the fine products of General Mills, by Share Senior Care, Minnesota's most experienced HMO health plan for seniors, by Midwest Federal, your good tree to come to for shelter since 1891, and by Northern States Power Company.